hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Amen. 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 Join me this morning as we look into the word of Luke chapter 2. You've read this this past week probably. We read it a couple times at our house. Or my, my family together. I guess we weren't at our house this week to read it. But our family's read this a couple times this week. And it bears repeating over and over again. Hear the word of the Lord. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appear with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. You probably learned these verses like this. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. If you had a penny for every children's program that verse had been read in, we'd all be rich, wouldn't we? Better than the guy who found the lotto ticket hidden in the leaves on Long Island in New York. What a great hope. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill toward men. Father, we love you today and pray your blessings on this, your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Preparing the way. I hope you've been preparing the way. I, preacher, I thought Christmas was over. Well, December the 25th is. It's still Christmas time. What's, what's today, the 29th? So what is it? Four, is it four calling birds? Yeah, four calling birds we've gotten, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. What if we were anxiously preparing the way, expecting Christ's return, expecting God to come and make a difference in our hearts and lives? What if we're preparing the way to know the glory of Jesus Christ? That's what Christmas is all about. The glory of God. That the glory of heaven came from heaven to earth. As the song says to show us the way. The glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord. Oh the glory of the Lord. It came that day when the angels spoke. And the angels were proclaiming to the shepherds. And the glory of the Lord was shining all around them. And they were terrified. Because the glory of God was there. There was something that was special that was going on and the angels declared glory to God in the highest. That on all of these things in this great, wonderful, majestic world, in this great place that God has fashioned and shaped and created with His own essence, with His own hands, that this world can experience the glory of God like had not been known in those days. Glory to God in the highest. That this glory, whatever, whatever that is. That the old timers used to talk about it a lot. The glory. The splendor. The majesty. The holiness. The awesomeness. The greatness of God. The glory. Sometimes you hear people refer to the American flag. Old glory. But can I tell you that there is a glory that comes from knowing the Christ. There is something that happens when we encounter the babe that was born in Bethlehem. Because the angels said, glory to God in the highest. And the irony of it all is that the glory of God in the highest 
came so that you and I might experience glory in the lowest of places. What in the world? Shepherds. Who would have thunk it? Who would have imagined? Why in the world would God have told shepherds? It used to be a a heralded position. I mean, wasn't David a shepherd? He was the king. It was great kingship training. It was a great place to learn how to shoot a slingshot, boys. It was a great place to learn how to take down a lion and a bear. A shepherd. A shepherd was the one who had picked up five smooth stones from a stream when the professional military were afraid of a great giant named Goliath. There was a little boy who was a shepherd, a a young man who picked up and he called upon the name of the Lord and God's glory came that day and the Philistines were defeated. And Goliath, the giant from Gath, was destroyed and a shepherd, but... Fast forward throughout time and shepherds were little more than the people who, I don't guess I could say the the garbage picker-uppers. We don't have too many garbage picker-uppers in Sumter, but maybe the people who sit at the dump pushing the button and they aggravate you sometimes because here I am, a young man, and sometimes I see them and I see what they do. You other old, ugly guys, you know what happens. The person in front of you is this sweet little girl, and the guy goes over there and he says, here, let me help you with your garbage. And here my back's killing me, and I can't hardly get out of the car, and I'm trying to pick that thing up and throw it in the trash, and he doesn't want to help me. They probably thought about as much of those guys sometimes as the people who, who, who maybe sit on the streets and... Aggravate you in Nashville, everybody's selling papers for a dollar. It's an industry for the homeless, but people don't often think much about them. The shepherds, who were they? They were some of the lowest of the day. And as I heard one guy say one time, he said, these were not even first shift shepherds. They were third shift shepherds. Without a paid differential. Wow. Wow. And God somehow brings His glory from the highest to the lowest. And that all of a sudden, there's something that happens in Bethlehem that the angels declare about the glory of the Almighty. The glory that the people of Israel had once known that would settle among the people in the temple, that would (coughs) meet them in the meeting place, that God's glory came and rested in His glory and fire and smoke and power and majesty this glory that they had often heard about or the stories that had been told and passed down from generation to generation when God's glory would walk with the children of Israel and they saw victories at their left and at their right that for a long time now had been absent that the world had been desolate that it had been empty and hopeless and perhaps they often felt displaced that on this day the angels declared glory Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Wow. And it wasn't found in great fire and great smoke and great gigantuan grandeur. And there's a couple places we saw as we rode down the interstate going to grandma's house. Now those places had lofty grandeur of God. Gorgeous Christmas lights. If you've ever been to the Opryland, Gaylord, Hotel, whatever convention, long, giant, strung out name at Christmas, now that is a glorious place. I don't know if it's as pretty as when we used to go over there, Lloyd, back in the day. I think it's not quite as pretty as it used to be. In my opinion, maybe I was just enamored back then. But that wasn't that first Christmas. That glory that God longed to rest with His people came in this tiny little Christ. Vulnerable? Wow. Vulnerable? You better believe it. Was it very quiet? Probably not. 
But it was God's glory and it had come to rest with men in the lowest of places. And Paul goes on later to write about this glory, this hope in Thessalonians. He says, for what is our hope, our joy or the crown in which we glory in the presence of our Lord Jesus when he comes? What is your glory? I hope it's the story of the Christ. Paul finishes that verse up and says, you are church because you heard, you responded to the gospel and you're the fruit of the glory of God in my life. What's the glory in your life like? Have you heard the message of the angels that spoke to the shepherds that night? Have you heard that message, that wonder? Have you experienced the glory of the Lord? What is your hope? What is your joy? Where does your glory in your life come from? Or are you void of glory? And as the Old Testament talks about Ichabod, the glory has departed. Mm. Where's your glory? Where does it come from? You see, at the beginning of this Advent season, we reminded ourselves that Jesus' mission was to bring glory to humanity. How? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Christ came to bring glory to your life. There's an old song I used to love. I don't even know why I love to sing it. I, I, I've thought about it a thousand times. I don't know why. I don't know that my church sang it particularly well. I don't know that they played it extremely well or people sang louder on that song. But there was something that always captured me when they used to sing Glorious Freedom. Maybe that little phrase at the end that talked about the glory Glorious freedom, glorious freedom. Jesus is mine. The glory of Christmas, that Jesus can be yours because God is with us. That Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the lost so that we could experience relationship with Him. So that we could know the glory of God intimately by having a relationship with Him. That you and I would prepare the way of the Lord. That you and I would make ready a place in our hearts and in our lives For God's glory to flow out of so that people can see His glory in our lives through blessing others and looking like Jesus and talking like Jesus and loving like Jesus. Even when the world doesn't understand what Jesus has said. To the point of John who reminded us the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. Emmanuel, we have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. What about this glory of God? Do you know the glory of Christmas? Do you know the glory of salvation? Do you have a glorious freedom because Jesus is yours, that Christ rests with you, and that glory to God in the highest and on earth People like us, His favor rest, His blessings rest, His mercy rest, His glory rest, His presence. Just like the angel, when the glory of God came through the angel and spoke to the Virgin Mary and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you this morning. Is the glory of God with you? Have you experienced the glory and the wonder of that little tiny child born in Bethlehem 2,000 some odd years ago? Have you experienced the joy of sins forgiven? Because the mission of Christ was that He came to seek and to save the lost. Not to make us happy, not to make us uh, more, more abundant, full of junk. But He has come so that we might be filled with His glory. The Lord is with you. We have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only Son. Mm. That might not make you make, turn a back flip right now, but I hope about three in the morning you could remember that God's glory. In that moment when you can't rest, when you're anxious, that you would remember His glory has come. 
Glory has come from heaven to earth. Glory has come and it dwells among people like us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only son. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Christmas is barreled by. It's December the 29th and People are playing football games and trying to win championships and I hope some of my teams win and I hope for some others to lose. Is that bad? I'm not going to tell you who. You don't know. It's the other team. You weren't even thinking about them. But in the middle of all the... We throw the stuff away and we put it in the box and we go, Whew, I'm glad that Christmas stuff is over. I'm so sick and tired. Oh no, my friend. Oh, I might be tired of the tree in the way at the corner. And I hit the ornament when I try to turn too sharp. But oh, I'm not tired of Christmas, the Christ. I'm not tired of His glory. I'm not tired of the message that the angels proclaimed that night to the lowly people, to these little folk called shepherds that no one really cared about. They were out guarding sheep. Oh, they were guarding precious estate, these Lambs that were used for all sorts of things, from food to sacrifice. Perhaps they're the temple sheep, not sure. But these guys who are out guarding, they're, they're guarding precious estate. And all of a sudden the angels come. Regardless of who you are, you see, compared to God, you're nothing. And there's the glory of God spangled across that mountainside. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Men and women and boys and girls where his favor rests. Wow. Have you experienced the glory of God? Do you want to know the glory this Christmas? Do you want to know what it is like to have the glory of God in the highest to rest and dwell among you the lowest? Peace, goodwill toward men. Glory. 2014's coming. I hope more than anything, you want to experience the glory of God. I don't want it to be the same. What if, what if we took this to heart and we prayed for God's glory to come? One thing's for sure. I may not have understood that song that was being sung when I was a boy, but I understood what happened when God's glory came at church on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night prayer time or at a camp meeting service when you thought you were tired and all of a sudden God's glory came. What if God's glory comes? Are you prepared to receive it? Are you prepared to receive the glory of the Lord? Michelle? We're about to sing a song. It's not particularly Christmassy. But oh, it is because it's about the Christ. That son who came in strength and power and majesty and glory. One of the lines says, glory, glory to the Father, glory, glory to the Son, glory, glory to the Spirit, glory to the three in one. Have you praised him this Christmas? Would you stand? The altar is a great place to come. Maybe this morning. You're in need of God's glory in your life. It's a good time to experience it. It's a good time to find it. It's a great day to pray and to receive the glory of the Lord. When I saw the cleansing fountain Open wide for all my sin I obeyed the Spirit's wooing When He said, will thou be I will praise Him, I will praise Him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain, give Him glory all ye people, for His blood can wash away each day, though the way seems straight and narrow, all I claim was swept away. My ambitions, plans, and wishes at my feet in ashes lay. 
I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each day. Then God's fire upon the altar of my heart was set aflame. Oh, I shall never cease to praise Him. Glory, glory to His name. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people. For his blood can wash away each day. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad he took me in. He's forgiven my transgression. Do you know that this morning? If you know this verse, you can know the glory of God. Amen. Oh, I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each day. Glory, glory to the Father. Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit, glory to the three in one. Sing it, church. I will praise Him. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each day. Oh, I will praise Him. Sing it, church. I will praise Him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each day. And Lord, we're so glad. We're so glad that this morning we can experience a glorious victory because of the Christ who came with full of grace and glory. The only begotten Son of God. Lord, this morning we believe with all of our hearts you are the Christ. Emmanuel, the one who has come to take away the sins of the world. Thank you for coming to the lowest of the low like me. Like us. And allowing us to be part of your glory. Lord, thank you so much for this time we call Christmas. When we remember with all the church, Christ has come. And Lord, we're anxious for the day when you will come again in glory, in majesty, in splendor, in wonder, in awe, in holiness for your bride, your glorious church, because you have come and, parted, and given a part of that to her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. We give you praise for this year. And we're anxiously expecting what you will do in the year to come. We're anxiously anticipating how you will move in hearts and lives. The, the bodies that you will heal. And we're thanking you now for the souls and the, 
salvation that will come and the hearts that will be changed and transformed. We give glory to your name. We give you praise. Lord, receive the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart this morning. May it be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our Redeemer. Now, Father, we pray again. Bless us, keep us, make your face shine on us, be gracious to us. Bless us in our coming, our going, our lying down, our rising up, our labor, our leisure, our laughter, our tears. Until we stand before you, dear Jesus, in that day when there will be neither sunset nor dawning. May we all enter into that city and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to remind you tonight, there is a service available.